Up next, the delegates for our next and the last panel for the day on advancing security and digital transformation with data, analytics, and AI. We have another great speaker lineup, and I'm sure you've all been waiting for this panel. Uh, firstly, I'd like to welcome our moderator, Dr. Lopa Mudra Basu, who's the advisor of Cloud Security Alliance at the APAC Research Council. Uh, welcome, Dr. Lopa. And also, good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, going to be introducing all our panelists. We have uh, Mr. Faisal Babu Kavungal, who's the IT governance and ERM specialist from the Gulf Drilling International Limited. We also have uh, Mr. Abhishek Pratap Singh, who's the head of information security at a leading bank in Oman. Dr. Hussam Ejnanki, who's the associate professor with the Dubai Police HQ. Mr. Ibrahim Krishnan, who's also the global head of privacy, new business and venture and compliance, and also international compliance at a leading bank in Qatar. And we also have uh, Mr. Taha Hussein, who's the specialist with information security with the public utility company in Dubai. So welcome, everybody. Dr. Lopa, the stage is all yours. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, loud and clear. Yes, doctor. Thank you. Good evening, friends. Trust, you all are doing good. Thank you for taking out your valuable time and join us. Thank you, Ryan, you were our expert and managing engine, SOSI, VM, Cloud4C, for having us all together in this platform. Data is the crude fuel empowering the digital world. War has experienced huge digital reformation as per McKinsey, global speed of digital transformation was accelerated by seven years during 2020 alone. It triggered several challenges. The most critical one is security. With the advancement of technology, sophisticated cyber attacks are increasing continuously. AIML has an immense impact on today's cybersecurity. On one hand, AIML are boosting the cybersecurity through speed, accuracy, efficiency, whereas on the other hand, throwing married challenge. Today, I'm glad to present a panel consists of cybersecurity experts with very versatile and rich experience. They are going to present their view on advancing security in digital transformation with data analytics and AI. Let's welcome Mr. Abraham Krishna. Yeah, hi. Dr. Hosman. Hi. Dr. Uh, Mr. Taha Hussein. Hi, everyone. Mr. Avishek Pratap Singh. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Fazil Babu. Hi. So, as we know that there is a huge change we are experiencing across the world with this huge digital transformation. My question to Mr. Ibrahim, as an eminent data privacy expert in this region, in your view, what are the key information security and privacy challenges in Qatar with increased digitization across the company? Yeah, it's a good question, and uh, assalamu alaikum uh, all. Um, thanks uh, for this opportunity to speak about uh, the role of data protection and the key uh, challenges uh, regarding to the uh, digital transformation. Uh, there are many uh, challenges, if we can say, um, all organization uh, will face uh, when uh, becoming more uh, digitalized and um, if we can say including um, um, 
getting uh, senior management, board of director approvals, budget issues, many, many more. However, from a data protection perspective, because I'm someone working this field here in the uh, in, in, in Middle East and especially in Qatar, uh, 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 and however, from data protection perspective, to add value to digitalization, the the the, the key challenges I can say is uh, how many major success digitalization can be difficult to measure for companies and uh, difficult to explain to top management, senior management, when detailing progress or achievements. However, uh, with the proper KPI, this is possible. In my experience, uh, data privacy added value to digitalization because it can be used uh, a measurement of uh, success and also um, a way to add more uh, profit and revenue to the organization adding KPI related to data breaches, data subject response time, data leakage, and the customer complaint uh, turnaround turn can be used to show progress when becoming more digitalized. So, um, so uh, my first recommendation uh, for audience is to consider proper KPI and including data privacy KPI because it's uh, measurable, uh, measurable and shows uh, the journey to success. Point number two is about the cooperation uh, uh, between information security and data, uh, and data privacy. As you know, all, um, if we can say, institution in the Middle East, now we have two departments, two separate departments. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that from the, 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 the large uh, corporate, large companies, they have a cyber security or information security department and data protection. Data privacy and information security have different rules in how they uh, protect a company's data, if we can say. But a, a key challenge is to ensure both departments work towards achieving the, uh, the goals. For example, GDPR and Qatar law number 13 strongly recommended to use uh, of encryption. However, this is not always possible because of old system and limitation, as you know, guys. This is the main or the key challenge, uh, challenges we are facing because the system, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's old, if we can say. Both department and the, both department uh, should work together. In this case, using risk-based approach to find uh, alternative solution to protecting the data. Uh, this can be using technology, but also cor uh, correct internal controls and governance. Point number three, and uh, this point also it's very important we are talking about data breach when moving to a digitalized environment companies are more at risk of data breach especially during the uh, uh, transition phase the challenge is to reduce the risk of data breach which may arise because of weak of control and governance not necessary external cyber threats companies should create uh, effective data breach processes and additional data privacy monitoring program should be conducted. The, uh, the aim of uh, this activity is to remain on top of uh, any data leakage of privacy threats. To report the risk, com companies should incorporate the privacy monitoring into the, uh, their existing risk uh, uh, forwards to maintain consistent risk scores. Privacy culture is also a point to consider as strongly should be in place uh, will be for digitalization to allow the organization to understand rules and responsibilities and who uh, when to report the pages to. Thank you, Mr. Yes, ma'am. Very well articulated. And I really felt that security and privacy need to work hand on hand and they have to create a culture across the organization to ensure that data and the critical infrastructure or the infrastructure of the organization is actually secure. Coming to Faisal, you have a rich experience in managing technology governance for digital transformation projects. Yeah. In your view, a traditional security model capable to address security challenges faced during digital transformation project? 
see uh, uh, thank you for for your time just uh, one minute my mic is on yes can you hear me yeah. yeah okay thank you for that uh, good question and uh, see regarding the security challenges and the security the traditional way how we manage during the digital transformation the major part uh, what we need to have is actually a clearly defined governance framework we have to drive the digital transformation through a clearly defined governance framework okay. that can you know provide the value proposition for your digital transformation initiative when we think of digital transformation the key elements that we have to align is the governance framework information security data protection and uh, risk management so let us take the first element the information security and protection of your cloud platform now we understand that you know to effectively drive a digital transformation initiative we need to depend multiple cloud service providers so that is a very very common everyone is aware about that because for example for infrastructure we may need to depend on an infrastructure service provider like uh, microsoft azure or aws kind of solutions at the same time for uh, application side we may need to depend a sap or oracle fusion kind of uh, application service platform and uh, at the same time you know we have to have a clearly defined security boundary for all these things so we have to depend third party security service providers that's also through the cloud itself so even within the cloud itself you know earlier we have uh, everything within our data center our, and uh, our you know landscape is limited within our data center and our uh, you know our uh, dr data center itself but now with the digital transformation basically we have uh, spread our infrastructure into multiple cloud service providers and uh, basically the major challenge that we will face basically to have a virtual boundary for all this uh, cloud infrastructure that is one of the major challenge we will face so how we can strengthen all these things is basically through the compliance solutions that are also available over there and uh, the first and foremost we need to have a very strong uh, data protection mechanisms to be implemented and uh, we should have clearly the you know we should define and clearly control how the data should be flowed between these two cloud environment or multiple cloud environment because uh, we have that is spread across different clouds and another thing is basically we need to have the clearly defined security boundary that is a virtual boundary we have to establish because at least uh, within that boundary we have a strong control over there because when we spread things on multiple cloud environment everything every cloud environment has its own positive and uh, negative at the same time you know security we may have a limited control but we should have a virtual boundary created in around this particular uh, cloud environments that boundary we will have a clear control such kind of products also available right now and uh, another thing when it is coming to the governance part that is plays a very big role over here because cloud is uh, you know subscription based and you know any governance or control measures issue it may end up in costing heavily to the company for example in terms of the licensing and usage kind of things that's very common actually so we need to have a strong governance uh, enforced to manage the digital transformation that is another another aspect we have to look for and uh, uh, as uh, ibrahim mentioned the compliance to the regulations that is a that's a major challenge because with gdpr and data privacy laws and all you know it's uh, this is not just uh, we meet the compliance we have to demonstrate the compliance so once we demonstrate the compliance basically we should have the tools and techniques to control you know all this data flow and uh, data leakage all such kind of things so demonstrating the compliance meeting the governance practices at the same time securing that environment it's a big challenge okay that's uh, that's that are, that are the major thing that we need to be addressing it so we should have a strong governance model first of all and uh, when it is coming to the data protection many a times you know we struggle to get uh, executive sponsorship for, sponsorship for data governance practices basically because once it is put in the cloud the strong data governance practices is something very much because any breach it will cost you heavily okay especially with the injection of the gdpr and all you know we, uh, we don't want to go to that into deep but uh, it is going to cost you heavily okay so these are the major challenges and uh, major areas we have to look into while we drive the digital transmission initiative thank you uh, now my question to 
Mr. Tahe, what would be your recommendation for the organization to handle the security risks during digital transformation, keeping the focus on data first strategy? Because today the data is the most critical thing which we are trying to protect or which are actually at most risk. Uh, sure, Dr. Lupa. First of all, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be talking with all of you. Uh, now, to answer your question, we know data breaches and you know cyber attacks have been growing rapidly over the past years, and it will continue to you know happen in the future as well. So let's phrase this question: uh, Are we going to let digital risk hold us back from adopting new technologies, or are we going to manage the risk and move forward? Uh, now, as we understand, uh, you know, businesses are moving into the digital space. Uh, there are many ways in which the hackers are going to try to penetrate into their or invade their businesses. You know, what, what I think businesses need to do is develop uh, a security strategy that's going to mitigate the risks associated with uh, the transformation into the digital security that they're looking for especially the data first organizations uh, that prioritize uh, innovation uh, you know business innovation and, and, and sorry somebody said something okay um, yeah and and and, and uh, you know as we are talking about the data first organizations let's be uh, honest it's not easy uh, there are different things to consider for these uh, you know, organizations from from security standpoint as well. For example, uh, what sort of data should be prioritized? Um, you know, how do I get executives like CXOs um, and you know technical leads or maybe senior managers on the same page, as well as the you know the technical implementation uh, you know, guys uh, in, in that chain? And uh, where do I begin uh, with the data first? Uh, what software or technologies should I use? What vendors should I onboard? And what implementation partners should I introduce to my organizations and so on? Uh, now, if you look at it from uh, the high level, my recommendation uh, from security standpoint, obviously, would be, uh, you know, maybe first of all, uh, to know how critical your data is. You know, you should know what, what your valuables are. Uh, it is essential to classify the data. The data classification is important. You should know. Uh, you should be able to identify the most precious information uh, that the businesses need to operate and, and, and you know, prioritize its security. Uh, sensitive data, in my opinion, should be kept to minimal, uh, but also given the strongest security in the organization as per the enterprise you know, policies. Um, also, in my opinion, I think uh, we should watch over the data uh, wherever it goes, whether it is in, let's say, uh, whether the data is at rest, uh, whether it's in transit or in use, we should protect data in all forms. Um, it's not only restricted to the on-premise setup right now because uh, you know we have gradually moved our businesses and our servers or infrastructure to cloud. We have hybrid cloud environments. Uh, you know we have people uh, who have their personal phones and data resides on their personal phones as well. The corporate I'm talking about the corporate data here. Uh, so we have different aspects to look at where does this data reside so we definitely need to look at uh, where this data is going and to ensure that it's protected and lastly we we must ensure uh, that we take a closer look at the governance aspect or the compliance aspect as well uh, you know compliance regulations or standards uh, or, or, or maybe the compliance requirements that the organizations abide by uh, for example gdpr and ist they can cause you know organizations information security uh, and risk capabilities uh, to change often towards the betterment so i think yeah in my opinion if we consider these three aspects at a higher level we're covering the most aspects of it thank you You're welcome I think this, uh, continuous digitization journey we can see that data are at more risks because of exposure and we need to have a proper governance and framework in place. But above that, it is very important that we have a continuous monitoring capability. 
to uh, have the things in place and capability to detect and handle the situation. My question to Avishek, digital transformation with inbuilt security. What is your view about achieving it in banking sector using AI ML? Because humanly, it's not possible today because we are actually operating in a virtual environment where the borders are not clearly defined and today we are actually extending the security beyond our actual physical perimeter. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lupa. It's a very good question. Uh, when it comes to banking industry, what we have witnessed post-pandemic, like our customers are very demanding because uh, during uh, post-pandemic or during pandemic, they were not used to going to branches. They were not used to, you know, getting, uh, visiting to the uh, bank and they were completely relying on digital channels. So when it comes to demand, that triggers digital transformation because in order to capture the market, you have to be a way ahead, like if you compare with your computers. So yeah, so, so there's, there's a tremendous pressure on our project managers to deliver things on time because we are constrained with respect to time, cost, and budget. And I got, and again, we have to make sure that uh, security should be part of each and every product which we are launching. So, uh, like we are aware, like uh, our AI and ML both depends on the data and quality of data. So uh, there's a uh, uh, demand of the R like whenever you are putting any security control at each cycle of data uh, or maybe product development, you have to make sure that your data which you are getting that is relevant. And that is being fed to uh, AI ML engine so that uh, you can take quick decisions. When it comes to uh, automation, AI is playing a very crucial role because we have seen the journey. We started with internet-based AI, then we come to business AI, perception-based AI, and now we are entering in autonomous, uh, autonomous AI. So when it comes to protecting your applications or infrastructure, there's one site where we talked about security, like built-in security. There's another site which talks about general controls like perimeter security. My uh, uh, like uh, participant Hosan and Ibrahim also they mentioned uh, like nowadays we have no boundaries in place. We are living in zero trust era, and uh, it's very difficult uh, to understand or to to uh, take quick decision based on so many inputs. In that sense, AI is helping us a lot because based on enormous amount of data, you can reduce your response time when it comes to securing your assets. Second point is uh, when it comes to uh, identify your threat vector, like uh, it's not all about identifying because more, most of the people that think AI is all about looking for viruses which are enabled through AI or something which is suspicious or abnormal activity. But AI also also being used to limit threat surface or risk surface. So you can use uh, AI to deploy best practices so that you can reduce your threat surface and ultimately you can make your entity secure. I hope that answers the query. Thank you, Adishay. So when we look at the increasing attack surface, we can see that the attack techniques is also continuously changing and the type of attack we are experiencing today, it is not only using the technology, there are lots of social engineering and new methodologies are, are used to crack those sophisticated attack. As a cybercrime ex-investigator and professor in the same field, Dr. Hossam, do you think that digital transformation has affected the cybercrime trends and criminal methods? If so, what kind of changes are evident? Can you please cite some example from reality? Uh, thank you, Doctor, for uh, for uh, attending for for make me with you or, or uh, give me a opportunity to be with you today and with uh, the all respected panelists uh, we have uh, in this panel. 
Uh, in the beginning, um, yes, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the digital transformation began uh, uh, slowly a uh, few years before the pandemic. Then uh, a lot of uh, new techniques of crimes or new techniques uh, which uh, initiated by uh, cyber criminals in phishing and in, in, in children exploitation online and a lot of uh, uh, financial uh, crimes. Uh, but the pandemic came and the uh, the transformation or digital transformation become very fast and everybody forced to be online. Uh, uh, even the uh, people who know how to use uh, safely the internet and, and the people who, who does not or who did not uh, know how to uh, use safely. So we had a lot of crimes, a lot of waves of crimes, new techniques, and everybody uh, tried to get the opportunity and, 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 and do crimes and commit crimes. So me, myself, I, 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 I was targeted by someone uh, uh, to be uh, to to fish to 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 fish me uh, online, so he he uh, you know uh, create a fake account uh, of my uh, my chief, and then he targeted me to uh, to send him some uh, some money that he is in travel, so he don't know who is talking to. So I I I accept what he said he sent to me, and then I uh, deal dealt with him, and I found. I got his IP address and I got everything about him and I sent him a mail with a snapshot with the with his details. So he disappeared then, and and a lot of uh, kinds of um, of such crimes, especially phishing. And when I I, I study uh, the, the the pandemic, what's affected the the cyber crimes? It affected uh, the children exploitation online very seriously. It 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 increased six hundred percent. Uh, from the beginning of pandemic uh, in, in four months. So uh, uh, according to what the Euripol, uh, Ir, uh, Irobol, uh, Euripol, um, detect uh, a conversation between uh, two criminals they, they, they tracking, uh, they said, uh, let's now move forward because people now in home and let's use this opportunity to Got, uh, to get a, a lot of movies and a lot of uh, snapshots, a lot of pictures for children. So uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, also the the dark web was very very uh, you know very very active in in such crimes, especially drugs and 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 uh, uh, sensitive data like uh, credit cards numbers, credit cards, uh, CVVs. Everything was uh, on, uh, online. It 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 become a, a, a very high wave. And I think it's not stop, especially, and it will it will improve, especially with the metaverse. Now we, uh, after the metaverse, uh, you know, launched, we heard about the uh, crimes which committed on the internet by uh, people who you know uh, rape uh, a woman on online, and she make a re made a report, and you know, and there is a, a lot of crimes will appear, and because of the using of of the AI. Uh, according to the digital transformation. So this is what I can say in this limited time, but a lot of things can, can be said. Yeah, I know that the way the crime is increasing, it may, you know, uh, we can discuss it hours and hours, it, and it's a very interesting topic mm -hmm. itself. Now, coming back to Faisal, in light of digital transformation, what are the changing priorities of cybersecurity? in Qatar, including the industry sector where you are in? Faisal, you are mute. Yeah. OK, OK, anyway. Thank you for that question. And uh, see, one of the major area that uh, you know digital transformation bring in is the analytics itself, OK? Especially in our own industry, because uh, we are a, you know, oil drilling contractor and our manufacturing zones are, you know, it's uh, filled with a lot of uh, machines, okay? And one of the major challenge we face is the, you know, the maintenance of such kind of machine. And uh, all these uh, machineries and everything is uh, IoT and PLC controlled. And uh, IoT is very common. And uh, even though there are a lot of data is produced over there, but the effective use of such kind of data was not that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not that effective. Okay, and for example, um, you know, if you find uh, some big machines uh, within the oil drilling rig, 
and uh, it may have a three every three month scheduled maintenance kind of thing okay so earlier and even now most of the things you know these are scheduled maintenance actually it is fixed for a period of three 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 months or two months or every 15 days okay every six months this kind of pre-scheduled maintenance are there okay but at the same time now these machines are integrated with iot and uh, control devices that produce a lot of data there you can give a clear vision on you know how frequently you need to you know once you analyze that data it will be very easy for you to decide how frequently you need the maintenance okay so rather than going that scheduled maintenance for a fixed three months period once you analyze the data you may identify that you know only every four months only you need a maintenance so you are saving there a one month so over a period of time it can save you a lot of a lot of cost so this kind of uh, you know analytics actually it is not effectively utilized so that predictive analytics will be one of the area that can be effectively utilized in this digital transformation because there is a lot of tools and techniques that are available that will give a clear you know tto for your investments and also you know it can save a lot of cost thank you Faisal. now when we are talking about you know the kind of transformation going on and while we need to handle the security part with the if we are trying to match the speed and the kind of log every day generated by the system it is not possible by uh, analysts to analyze the data and provide the proper feedback in time coming back to the uh, in digital transformation what data analytics ai is vital in the in advancement of security uh, sure dr lupa uh, I'm sure, you know, most of us are, uh, you know, some of us are already aware about how advanced uh, or how advancements uh, are being brought in by the artificial intelligence, data analytics and everything. Uh, we use it on a regular basis, whether it is in the development or, or security or anywhere in the field. And as we all understand, since we're from the security background, uh, artificial intelligence can replace or augment human actions or activities. Along with this, uh, if we complement it with data analytics, especially let's say uh, data predictions or uh, you know pattern detections, uh, uh, now this is going to make AI more valuable for our business. Um, you know these organizations, while they're running this uh, digital transformation program, have to come to rely on artificial intelligence tools along with these data analytics tools to improve their processes and security. Now, AI, artificial intelligence, along with uh, the data analytics, has so many use cases. Uh, you know, I'm sure most of us are, are, are in touch with the SOC or data center teams, and we have witnessed this as well in terms of the automation of a process, um, finding out anomalies in, in some sort of an attack coming in, uh, and a lot many use cases in information security especially. Uh, maybe we can discuss some of the, the, the key use cases uh, that, that we have in AI, uh, along with the, the complement of data analytics as well. Um, if we look at some of the statistics, I'm talking about the fraud detection use case, by the way. If you look at some of the statistics here, in 2021, we had uh, a record of about 4.24 million um, you know, losses because of the data breaches as compared to the previous year, uh, which had about 3.8 million um, you know, dollars of loss, financial loss occurred by the companies in the country. Uh, but here is the surprise. Artificial intelligence, or the, the organizations that used artificial intelligence with data analytics uh, and, and automation as well in their organizations had to pay 80% lesser breach costs. Uh, than companies that that do not have these technologies in place. Now, this goes to show that that technologies like AI and data analytics are of paramount importance to 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 the enterprises, especially if you work with uh, the PII information. Similarly, um, we can maybe have uh, the other use case as the employee monitoring. We have seen during the COVID times 
a lot of companies had their businesses model turned remotely. So a lot of uh, employees worked remotely. And if we look at some of the research here again as well, research states that organizations with over 60% of their workforce working remotely have higher chances of uh, you know, breaches and then ultimately leading to more cost. Now, companies with an average of, let's say, 80 to 100 percent of, uh, you know, remote workforce, uh, they suffer more losses from companies that have on-site workforce that do not encourage, uh, you know, off-site or remote work as well. However, um, organizations that have, you know, 80 to 100 percent uh, remote workforce in place, uh, if they utilize advanced AI and data analytics, it can definitely prevent malicious uh, you know, some sort of attacks or activities that can happen, especially corporate espionage or insider, you know, information leakage as well. Even in its current form as well, um, artificial intelligence along with uh, the data and analytics has immense potential in, in digital transformation uh, from security standpoint. Of course, I'm talking from security standpoint. And above everything else, I am sure uh, it will bring great innovation to the business as well. I hope that yeah. answers your question. Yeah, so we can see there are lots of use cases related to uh, data analytics, AI, and even uses in security. Uh, my question to Ibrahim, what role AIML have in data protection, specifically, you know, uh, keeping data privacy in mind in this digitally connected world? If you can cite some of the use cases. Sorry, guys. Um, as you know, guys, I'm working as a head of data privacy and data protection and the biggest bank in, uh, in, in Qatar. Based on that, let me uh, define uh, the, if we can say the digital transformation from my perspective, okay? Uh, Digital transformation is the integration of uh, digital technology into all areas of the business. It's result in a more efficient way in how business operates, including streamlining procedures and reducing manual tasks. Some of the benefits of digital transformation, but again, guys, I'm telling you that from my opinion, from as a, as a, as a head of data privacy, I'm not a, a, someone uh, working in cyber security or information security department. I'm working as a head of data privacy. First, about enhanced data collection. Th this is the main benefit. The second benefit is efficient management. Digital transformation enables data to be uh, co uh, complied into uh, in one central hub, therefore making it uh, easier to manage operationally and reduce efficiency. Number three is increased benefits. Statistics show 80% of the organization that completed digital transformation report an increase in profits. Point number four about the regulator uh, relation, relationships. All of my colleagues now, the speakers, they mentioned about the compliance to comply with the old laws and regulation. Regulators are fo uh, focusing right now on digital transformation strategy. For example, in Qatar Central Bank, we uh, put, put it in place a strategy to support the growth of financial uh, financial technology, where they see FinTech as a key as uh, to long-term financial services success. Um, again, uh, the role of uh, data protection in relation to digital transformation can be broken down into the following components. I will summarize it as much as I can because I know that the time is uh, limited. First, about governance. Ensuring all digital transformation uh, uh, follows data protection regulations such as, uh, such as Qatar Law Number 13, Article 8, which puts obligation on the controller to protect the company data. Point number two, about data subject right. Digital transformation should be completed in a manner where all data subject information is still accessible and controlled to ensure any data subject uh, subject requests, such as right to delete an action properly. Point number three, as Taha said about data classification, 
And this is a very, very important point. Classification of documents is a very important task in order to protect the data and assess the scope and impact of regulation. Therefore, data protection helps with reviewing the confidentiality of documents. In Qatar, let's say, it's recommended to classify to uh, from three uh, or four levels, like public, uh, public, internal, confidential, and secret. And the last point is uh, about the process controls. As a process, uh, as, as a processes are digitalized, data privacy impact assessment (DPIA) control co between controller and processor reviews and internal control enhancement are uh, uh, vital to ensure privacy by design and default principle and default principles are achieved. The objective in digitalization is to ensure the privacy is considered throughout the data lifecycle. This is, I tried to summarize as much as I can, my dear. Very well articulated, Ibrahim. Uh, we, we can, uh, now we can see the use cases related to security, and also we come across some use cases of uh, related to data privacy uh, when it is coming to AI ML or uh, using of data analytics. Now, my question to Dr. Hosma, what are the new techniques of law enforcement to track and detect cyber criminal using artificial intelligence? Yes, uh, thank you for the, for the, the question. Uh, actually, um, the law enforcement agencies, uh, which is uh, internationally and, and uh, you know, uh, regionally, uh, they created uh, some some new techniques with with AI to track or to ex to to you know um, uh, to track the criminals uh, which uh, or who uh, um, exploit children online. So they made a a, ch a child attractive child uh, with the AI. It can talk and can uh, make emotions uh, to uh, involve in in the uh, websites and and gaming online. Uh, as a child, and and uh, actually, according to their trends, uh, this uh, this AI uh, personality attracted uh, hundreds of criminals, and they uh, could detect them, and then uh, they can uh, collect evidences against them. Uh, also, in the uh, criminal investigation for the cyber crimes or any other kind of crimes, we have uh, uh, many new uh, generations of apps. Uh, which um, which um, do the job uh, uh, using uh, ML uh, and uh, uh, analyze the data and can uh, collect information about the suspected and criminals, uh, of course, according to the law, uh, after, uh, you know, uh, issuing a warrant and, and lot, uh, a lot of uh, procedures. And then, uh, like Maltigo, unlike uh, Social Link, unlike um, uh, many, many, uh, many uh, apps, we are using uh, also the uh, according to uh, an event I, I attended with the FTK uh, uh, company, they uh, could generate new uh, version of uh, of the the app that they can uh, uh, solve the ransomware attacks. Some some of them, not all of them, but some of them they could uh, uh, now they can uh, you know solve it and and decrypt the uh, data. And this is uh, with also with analyzing the data and using the AI. And of course, this is uh, you know uh, a new generation of of techniques. Uh, the the law enforcement can use it in in solving crimes and 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 tracking criminals and detect their personality and uh, make the uh, law procedures against them. Great to know that. Now we know that there are so many ways AI ML and the data analytics is utilized to boost the security, but it is not so easy to deploy it. There are so many challenges related to deployment. From your experience, Avishek, what are the challenges have you faced while deploying data analytics, artificial intelligence, in terms of impact on productivity and compliance with the regulatory body? 
Thank you, Dr. Lopa, for the question. Uh, like I highlighted uh, last time, even uh, Dr. Ibrahim, sorry, Dr. Uh, Hossein and Ibrahim both highlighted, when it comes to privacy, we have a stringent law and you have to comply with regulatory bodies. Since I am uh, heading uh, InfoSec Division from this uh, governance point of view in Omar, we also have operations in KSA in Quebec. So we have seen that in the uh, last couple of years, tremendous change in terms of data privacy and individual rights. So uh, AI and ML both are just like kids, just like child. So whatever you will teach to them, they will act according. They cannot differentiate between what is right and wrong. And luckily and luckily with, with, the, with the help of uh, cloud solutions, access to uh, on-demand AI and ML is cannot be controlled to you know good people only. There are people who are utilizing AI and ML. Uh, I would say attackers are also using the same technology. So now the issue is AI versus AI. Most of the attacks, those are automated now. Okay. Now, in order to protect yourself, you are using the same technology, but we have certain limitations. Limitation in terms of where you will put your data. Sometimes we have a stringent instruction from the regulator that like you cannot put PI information beyond certain boundaries. I cannot put my customer data beyond Oman geographic reason. So we have that constraint. However, in terms of capability, if I'm going for global uh, cloud provider, I have more options. I can save more costs. So when it comes to compile, like achieving compliance with regulatory body, yes, yeah, some constraints are there, but uh, now Oman is opening up a little bit so that we can uh, you know, achieve in the near future soon. And uh, when it comes to productivity, Definitely, I would say when as a like a security professional, I would say where we were spending days in terms of you know analyzing data and what kind of attack has been done or performed and what action we need to do in order to protect our asset. Now those timelines has been reduced from days to hours. We can take quick decisions. And, and again, AI deployment is not uh, like a one-day task or two-day task, it's a journey because like I mentioned, you have to teach your system what is right, what is wrong. You have to feed clean data so that in future you can reduce false positive. We have many uh, uh, vendors available in the market. They advertise, they reach up to autonomous AI level. Uh, in my experience, uh, as of now, there's no vendor who provides end-to-end -end solution. Yeah, combination of different vendors and solution can give you uh, a kind of productivity or kind of solution which you are looking for. But uh, yeah, you have to be patient. You have to buy in yeah trust from your uh, sponsors from your management and uh yeah over a period of time like when it's say three years four years you can showcase like what we have achieved in terms of uh, lesser amount of data uh, breaches attacks successful data attacks because in security we don't have clear cut kpis you cannot showcase that i have made profit of 200 dollars sorry 200 million dollars something like that you can just showcase that okay in last two years or three years Amount of breaches has been reduced significantly. Attacks are being detected in time, and we are running safe. So I hope uh, that answers your query, Lupa. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's a very insightful discussion, and uh, thanks to all the panelists who contributed uh, uh, continuously through that discussion. Uh, with this, I'm opening the house for the QA. Thank you, Dr. Lopa. It was a very uh, engrossing discussion. I would say the variety of perspectives, variety of experiences being shared. And uh, thank you to all the panelists, Mr. Fazil Babu, Mr. Abhishek Pratap Singh, Dr. Hoksam, Mr. Ibrahim Krishnan, and Mr. Taha Hussain. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your experiences today. Is there any question for thank the panel? Uh, nothing on the audience panel here, ma'am, but uh, since we're running out of time, we'll be closing. But we will okay. be sharing some uh, post event documents and sharing your contact details. I'm sure people will be getting in touch. Thank you. And it's really very, very informative uh, discussion. What I uh, would like to say that key, I would like to highlight a couple of key points. One is that with the digitization, uh, the entire uh, connectivity between the organization as well as the you know uh, 
with the partner and the end customer is uh, uh, continuously increasing. With that, also the connectivity are going uh, actually going to force uh, rakes attack surface is increasing. Till budget and the approval is a challenge, but it can be handled with the prop having proper framework in place, proper KPI in place, which can be clearly demonstrate the requirement to the management to buy the, their trust so they can fund it to have a proper security and privacy in place. Again, security in, and privacy is just not a technology or just not a framework in place. It is moreover a culture within the organization. So cultivate a risk-driven culture within the organization and show through that you can actually bring the risks down within the organizational appetite and keep able to demonstrate that improvement time on time to the management. AI and ML is a uh, immense help to have a adequate security in place but again this is not only adopted by the organization that is public private government but also criminal are effectively using those technology they are also scaling themselves to you know uh, handle the stringent security uh, deployed by the organization and breaking them. So monitoring, the continuous effective monitoring is the key word, which is very important for the sustaining of privacy and security. And AIML and data analytics is a huge help where some areas human brain is fatigued due to some of the continuous and repetitive work which can be automated using them. Also, we can make the decision based on a kind of, you know, outcome they are throwing. Thank you all. I think the uh, input which we have received from all panelists is going to be a value for all of us. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. With this, dear audience, we have reached the end of an insightful and successful Qatar Hybrid Cloud and Cybersecurity Summit. Two days of great sessions and networking. The entire team of Trex event is thankful to all our esteemed speakers, eminent panelists, eminent moderators, and our sponsors. And last but not the least, I thank all our VIP delegates for joining us today and yesterday in huge numbers and making both the days a grand success. Please do not visit, uh, forget to visit the booths uh, to interact with our sponsors, to explore what and how they can be of help and assistance to your organizations. Thank you once again from the entire team of Trex. Let's meet in the next event and have a great evening.